Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Ooh, pack one, pick one, Nicol Bolas. Well, if we start a draft with Nicol Bolas, we can kind of build around it. And it's definitely worth building around. There's also Leyline Prowler, Death Sprout, great cards. But I think we're going to go with uh, Dragon God here. And try and make a sweet Sigrixis control deck. Spark Harvest also great. But uh, got to go with Nicol Bolas here. Second pick, I think we're taking Cruelty. Um, Narset could be okay, but it's kind of high variance whether or not Narset is going to be good in our deck. Whereas Cruelty is always going to be solid. And we want to be main black, whereas double blue can be somewhat tricky, even if we want to try and cast Nicol Bolas, whereas single black is going to be easy peasy. Um, so yeah, let's take a Cruelty here. And now we could consider a Soren's Thirst. Not a removal spell. There's Firemind's Vessel to help us fix our mana and ramp. Could be a consideration too. Last of the Platings is a solid card. Although if we're going to end up more controlling with not a lot of creatures, it's going to be a bit weaker. And then of course Dambreaker is going to be solid too. Guild Globe for fixing. Contentious Plan could be okay if we end up with more Planeswalkers. Grim Initiates, not amazing here. It's a better card than like the Red Black Sacrifice archetype. So there are some considerations here. Vessel, Globe, and Thirst, I think, are the cards that stand out. Thirst and Globe sometimes even wheel. Yeah, we're gonna need some mana fixing for sure. Globes we can usually pick up along the way. Vessel has a more unique effect. So I could see taking the Vessel, and then we can also afford to take some more expensive cards along the way. I don't hate it. And I don't mind me a Divination, nothing wrong with drawing two cards. Not a big fan of Dovin in general, otherwise we're maybe looking at like a Guild Globe for additional fixing, but Triumph seems fine. And now an easy Spark Harvest. Over nothing. Honored Godfire would make our deck too, but... Yeah, can't take it over Harvest. Nothing wrong with a No Escape over nothing else. And Aid the Fallen, get back our Nicol Bolas, why not? We will need to pick up some creatures at some point. A Reaver seems like a good two-drop for our deck. Plays well with Spark Harvest. Otherwise there's Turret Ogre, which we could consider. But we're gonna be main black, just looking to splash a little bit of blue and red. Or maybe be blue-black with a line to red splash. So I don't know how many red cards we actually want. And I think I'm taking a Silver Wing over Crush Descent. I'm not a big fan of Crush Descent. I guess I'll take it now. And Dambreaker Wield. So did Manticore and Globe. All cards we could consider. But I don't mind Dambreaker just as a good beefy creature to help us stabilize on the ground. And again, if we end up with a, one or two more Planeswalkers, it's going to be even better. I think I like it over the Manticore. Mainly because we're blue as one of our main colors instead of red. And nothing here I really want. Alright. So first pack went alright. Got a Nicol Bolas, two solid removal spells with Cruelty and Harvest. Got a counter spell, a draw spell. So shaping up to be a decent looking uh, control deck. What about a Chandra? It is double red. So it's not going to be very easy on the mana. And we also risk exiling Nicol Bolas with E plus one. But it's still a great card. Otherwise we're passing up on a Callous Dismissal. Which I think would be the next pick. Weird is also great. Although it's going to be better for red as one of our primary colors, so we can play it on turn 3. Herald of the Dreadhord is a fine card. Guild Globe as well. Skulker would also make our deck at this point. And I guess there's also the Skydiver, if we wanted to splash a bit of green as well. Since presumably we're going to have some mana fixing for Nicol Bolas, so we might also have the fixing for Skydiver. 
But I think I'm still gonna take the Chandra here. You wanna go, tough guy? Since it also plays well with our Aid the Fallen. And now I think we're taking another Cruelty. Celebration's a great card. Can even get back Planeswalkers from the graveyard. But double green's not gonna be the easiest. And Cruelty just fits our deck perfectly, so I don't think we can pass up on it. And I'm a fan of Dismissal. Visionary would also be solid. Need to make sure we have some creatures that can actually block, since right now we have almost no creatures. And I don't want to be spending our Obnixil's Cruelty on mediocre creatures from the opponent. We want some effective blockers. I think we just want a Visionary, just a good two mana blocker. Although it's close with Dismissal, like, we already have Spark Harvest double cruelty, so we already have ways to interact with creatures that are on the board, which makes Dismissal maybe less needed than normal. Visionary just provides a good blocker on the ground and a relevant ability in the late game, so that's kind of what we're looking for. So even though Dismissal is a better card than Visionary, I think we need the Visionary more right now. Dreadmalkin is a good card, but I don't think it's great in our deck, since we're lacking creatures. Um, another 8th Fallen could be a consideration. Just go all in on the Planeswalker plan. Or we could take another No Escape. Yeah, Dreadmalkin's great in any deck, but exactly the blue-black control deck with very few creatures, which we are. Otherwise, I would take it. I think we take another 8th Fallen here, and then hope to get a third Planeswalker. And then it's going to be great for us. I'm a big fan of... The giant here as a nice curve topper draws us a card and makes use of the ramp that the vessel provides. Hmm, Kiora is interesting. I don't hate Kiora, she helps us ramp. If we have a single mountain, she can make double red for Chandra. It's an extra planeswalker for Aid the Fallen and triggers off Dam Breaker and Giant. I think that's better than like a random totally lost or, or turret ogre. Sure, why not? All right, Soren's Thirst looks reasonable. I wouldn't say no to a Behemoth, just as a beefy creature we can play, synergizes with Kiora, and can sort of protect our other Planeswalkers as well. But Thirst is relatively efficient, and double black shouldn't be too much of a problem, considering we need triple black for Nicol Bolas as well. So yeah, let's try it. And Augur Bolas could be good here. How many instances of sorceries do we have? One, two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight. Probably not playing this one. So, need a few more for Augur to be great, but we still have an entire pack left. I think that's reasonable. We're looking for more early defensive creatures, so even just a 2 mana 1 3 isn't the worst. And now we can take the Gilglo pretty easily. Nothing here we want. Don't think we want a Prismite. Alright, so moving into the last pack, what are we looking for? More creatures in general. Uh, Lasso of Depth Reaver, things that play well with Spark Harvest would be great. A bit more mana fixing also would go a long way. And maybe a, a few more ramp pieces to help us get to 6 mana faster, but it's not all that necessary, and in blue-black we're not gonna have a ton of ramp. And I guess another Planeswalker wouldn't hurt. So, we've got the making of a nice Nickel Bolas deck here. Ooh, a Rolask. Well, Rolask is definitely a bomb, but double green is definitely kind of a stretch. So I don't think we can take the Rolask here. There's some pretty solid options for us. There's Aven Eternal, there's Toll of the Invasion. There's also Obnixilus, although I don't think we're a great Obnixilus deck. Since we don't really pressure the opponent's life total, so the ability is not too relevant and we're making the opponent draw quite a few cards. Of course, it does play somewhat well with uh, Aid the Fallen. Even there, I don't think Obnixilus is quite where we want to be. So I think we take the even Eternal here. Weird would be solved as well, but... Like, this Chandra is pretty ambitious on the mana, so I don't think we want to stretch the reds even further and just take the salt even eternal which also plays well with spark harvest do we want a second firemind vessel 
might be overkill. The problem with Vessel as well is that it doesn't cast Chandra by itself since it makes two different colors. But if we have a second Vessel then our late game is kind of taken care of in terms of ramp. So I don't mind taking another Vessel here. Might be a bit much. If we drop both it's not gonna be great but ooh. Hi Jaya. Jaya looks good. With our double Aether Fallen we already want to be splashing red. Another Spark Harvest would be great. Taskmaster doesn't look amazing with so few creatures. And to be honest, Spark Harvest with the few creatures we have also doesn't look amazing in terms of being able to cast it for one mana. It's gonna cost us five mana a lot of the time. So it loses some of the efficiency that the card normally has. So I think we still take Jaya here. Time to face and now double eight the Fallen is looking quite strong. And I'm not gonna say no to another Augur Bolas. Sadly, it doesn't help us find our Planeswalkers. And I don't think we picked up any additional instants or sorceries in the meantime. Could also take the Skulker. It's just a reasonable body that can protect our Planeswalkers and pressure opposing Planeswalkers. Since we are pretty bad at dealing with opposing Planeswalkers right now. Other than Nickel Bolas just straight up killing them. We also picked up a double Vessel in the meantime, so we've got quite a bit of ramp to make it easier to cast these expensive cards. Yeah, we will need some more early creatures as well. That's definitely something we're on the lookout for. Additional Reavers, other two drops we can find. Could even consider the Wall of Runes. Could also consider Mana Geode. Tibal's Rager would also be excellent, although it is on the splash. So we're not always going to have it on turn two. So there's a few options. Mana Geode if we want a bit of additional fixing. And Mana Geode ramping us into our five drops on turn four is looking pretty good too. So right now we're fixing is a Gil Globe, two Vessels, and Kiora kind of counts if we have a basic Mountain in play for Chandra. I think I take the Mana Geode just to kind of shore up the Mana Fixing. And the wall might even wheel or we might get another one. Alright, well, Interplanar Beacon in terms of casting or red spells is better than a Mountain. All the red cards in our deck are Planeswalkers, Chandra, Jaya, Nicol Bolas. So the beacon basically does what a mountain would do while gaining us a bit of life. So that seems pretty solid. Don't think we want any of these red cards. Not our skulker doesn't seem needed. So yeah, I'm kind of into the beacon here. Right, let's take a beacon. Ooh. Cyclops Electromancer. Now that one we can't cast with the beacon. But it is quite strong in our deck. Since we have a lot of instants and sorceries. Don't think we want a Bond of Revival with so few creatures. So yeah, let's take the Electromancer. And we might have to reconsider this beacon now. Um, do we want another No Escape? I kind of was looking for an extra instant or sorcery to go with our Augur Bolas. There's also Shriek Diver which can help us pressure opposing Planeswalkers. And an extra Flyer which wouldn't hurt. But I'm kind of liking the second No Escape. Ooh, 12 the Invasion looks great. Another instant or sorcery for Augur Bolas, an early play we can make, more fodder for Spark Harvest. Looks good. And I guess we'll take a third Ogre, don't think we'll play it. More no escapes. Already have a Blind Blast in the sideboard. Operative if we want a random 2-drop. Alright, so we've got a pretty interesting deck on our hands. A Grixis control. So now that we picked up the Electromancer, the beacon looks a bit worse since it doesn't actually make red mana for the Electromancer. Casting Chandra is going to be a little tricky. But we do have Globe, Geo, Double Vessel. So we need two of those to cast Chandra. Or we need Mountain plus Kiora. How many mountains would we want if we were just playing these three red cards? Probably just one. So it's probably like one or two mountains. Need a decent amount of black for Soren's Thirsts. This is probably going to be a 17 land deck, even though we have quite a bit of ramp. I guess we could get greedy and play 16, because we have double Vassal and Mana Geode and Kiora. Yeah, we could still consider playing the Beacon, because we have a bit of mana fixing for the Electromancer. And it does help also with casting Nicol Bolas. So Beacon could still be worth it. Go m one mountain, one Beacon. Uh, seven swamps, seven islands. I think that's reasonable, even though we do need double black for thirst. Do also want blue for some of these early plays. 
So we need to make three more cuts. I could see the second Aether Fallen being overkill. Uh, what else? Could see cutting a No Escape. Silverwing might be cuttable, although we're kind of creature light. I like the six drops with all these planeswalkers. Since we've got quite a bit of ramp, we've got Kiora, Geo, Double Vessel. So we can kind of skip most of our four drops. And then maybe shave a No Escape. Yeah, it would be sad if Chandra exiles Nicol Bolas. That's one interaction I'm not looking forward to. But we're not going to be playing Chandra on turn 4 very often. So if we have enough mana, we can often use Chandra and plus, and maybe if we like exile a land, play the land right away. So one more cut. Yeah, Thirst will be somewhat tricky to cast early with only 7 swamps. But I don't think we want to go down to 6 islands. But even if we cast it on like turn 3 or 4, it's still fine. Yeah, I think 16 lands is reasonable. Got quite a bit of card draw, quite a bit of ramp. Don't want to flood out too badly. So do we want to cut the second eighth of all them? Might be a bit greedy to play both. If we draw both without drawing a Planeswalker first, it's quite bad. Yeah, I think we shave an eighth of all them. If we were playing sideboard at the games, I could see us bringing this in some of the time. All right, I think this would be our deck. And then a mana base, a mountain, a beacon. So for casting Electromancer, we have Globe, Geode, Double Vessel, Mountain, that should be enough. And then for the Red Planeswalkers, we also get Beacon as an extra source. So casting Chandra is going to be pretty tricky, but I think it's still reasonable to include her. Even though she's a little awkward if we like flip a counterspell that doesn't do much for us. And we would hate to exile our own Nicol Bolas with her, but overall still a card draw engine, and it's not like we have a ton of card draw engines in this deck. Let's go. Alright, well... <laughs> this hand can cast a Nicol Bolas and a Chandra, so I'm in. On the play as well. Yeah, hopefully no counter spells or hand disruption, and hopefully no aggro deck. If they play 2-drop on turn 2, we might be dead. Swamp go. Alright, Cruelty is a good pickup. Alright, Islands. Points, let's go. Mana Geode. Kiora. Don't think we need Kiora. Gleaming Overseer. It's a good one. So there's no way for us to cast two spells here, is there? This enters tapped. Alright. Next turn we're all set up for the god Pharaoh, the dragon god, Nicol Bolas himself. Pwn proliferates, so no, no escape mana available. And a Taskmaster. Alright, so we'll have to do some thinking here. Six, so we'll still have two mana, so we can still play a Visionary. Which can block the 2-2, but it can block a Taskmaster and there's nothing for them to get back. So that seems good to me. And then we can just plus. Will resonate throughout the multiverse. Well, now we could also Cruelty. Is it better to Cruelty or to play Visionary? Problem with playing Visionary is if, if they kill the Visionary, then they can finish off Nicol Bolas. So I kind of like Cruelty on the Taskmaster more here. So their opponent exiled a Swamp. And gotta hope they can't amass onto the zombie even more. And then next turn we can slam a Dam Breaker as a good blocker, proliferates, or we can play Chandra first, we'll see. Reason to main phase a Cruelty in our turn is if our opponent has like a Lazada Plating. Don't want to run into that, would be unfortunate otherwise. Dismissal or Vessel. Alright, so... Bumps the Zombie. It's plus. Yeah, they might be holding a Sorin's Thirst here if they kept up double black. 
So Nicol Bolas is gonna die here, sadly. Not much we can do about it. Or is there? Well, now we can cruelty the Overseer and then chum block with a Visionary. I guess that's our plan. You know what would be fun if our opponent finally manages to kill Nicol Bolas and then we draw 8 to fall and then get him back? So Soren's Thirst can't kill Visionary, so we should be able to chum block and save our Dragon God for another turn. And every turn that goes by, Nicol Bolas just keeps 2 for one the opponent. Electromancer, oh boy. Almost. Need one more spell. Augur Bolas, nice chum blocker for us. Kaya gone. Alright, so what's our play here? We could just play Tithe Bear Giant. Could play Augur and play a Vessel. Could play a Dam Breaker, Proliferate. Dam Breaker is kind of the safest play in a way to make sure that Nicol Bolas survives because we get to Proliferate. If they have a counter spell, then playing a 6-drop creature is kind of painful. So I think I like playing Augur, because we don't really care if it gets countered or killed. Toll of the Invasion, well, it's probably worth it here. Make another blocker, check out what they have left in hand. And there's a Thirst we knew about and a Bleeding Edge. Well, we've had some lucky top decks, that's for sure. Keeping our nickel balls alive. The Dragon God. And our opponent's gonna scoop it up. Just too much value. Well, that was a sweet game. Next turn we would have been able to play the Cyclops with three spells in the graveyard, killing the 3 3. Would have been brutal. Alright, let's hope that uh, good fortune continues. And looks fine. Turn 2 Visionary, turn 3 Toll, turn 4 Vessel, and then we need to draw another piece of mana fixing for Chandra, Gilglope will do. Let's play Visionary here. Up against a blue-red spell stack, which is definitely one of the better archetypes. Spellkeeper Weird. Um, could play Kiora. I think I want to check out their hands, although it is awkward that they have a weird so they can get back whatever spell we take with Toll, but I think Toll is probably just going to go after a creature. Sphinx is pretty scary, so let's take that one. So we know about it, the Fairy's Time Twists. And this seems like a good turn for Vassal. Don't have any good blocks on the third ogre here. But uh, hopefully we can draw a removal spell at some point when the opponent's tapped out. Giant was a good draw. We could even consider playing Kiora first, so we can draw a card when we play Giant. Oh, never mind. Kiora can untap the Vessel. Doesn't just need to untap land, so we can actually do both. Alright, sweet. Draw two cards. There's a removal spell for Ogre. This is going well. And Globe lets us cast Chandra. Also Kiora on Tapping Vessel lets us cast Chandra. So things are moving along nicely. 
do want to make sure that the opponent is tapped out of blue mana before we try and cruelty one of their creatures. Otherwise they can just a fairy's time twist in response. But uh, for now we've got some good defense. Yeah, Vassal plus Kiora is definitely a nice interaction that I failed to mention earlier. They've got a Flux Channeler plus a Time Twist, so they can maybe set up a counter somewhere and then start proliferating. We've got a Cruelty to try and blow that up if they try and proactively Time Twist. Thirst can kill the Channeler, but again, we don't want to do it while they have Time Twist up. So we can make quite a bit of mana here. And play Chandra, plussing before we play lands in case we hit a land. You wanna play with fire, huh? Hopefully, don't reveal Nicol Bolas. Eat the Fallen. No, it's you Doesn't do much here, sadly, but that's fine. Alright, let's cast Guild Globe. Draw the land. I think Moki okay, is still playing a land despite having a visionary in play, since we want to have a lot of mana in case Chandra reveals something expensive. And then just keep up our removal spells for now. Not in a hurry to attack with our giant here. And if our opponent makes a move with one of their instants here, we can respond accordingly. Opponent plays land, so one unknown in hand, and still a spellkeeper weird at the ready. Do have to watch out for like time twist plus spellkeeper weird getting back time twist shenanigans. Could have considered looting with the visionary there, probably would have been correct to do so. Let's start by plusing Chandra. No escape, yeah that's an awkward one. So, not the one we were hoping to reveal. I guess we could loot main phase to try and find some action. Alright, that's definitely action. I think I'm gonna do my untappy shenanigans with the vessel so we can keep up some removal. And then I think I'm okay playing the land as well. We could also untap visionary with Kiora. Don't have to do that now. So let's make some mana. And I think I play out my land so we can keep up the cruelty as well. Proliferate, draw a card. Reaver is a good one too. Just gonna say go for now. Could consider attacking with the giants now that we have a dam breaker on defense. But we're just gonna win with planeswalkers here. Think we can chill. Yeah, no escape only counters creatures and planeswalkers. So we've got 19 cards remaining. Could ultimate Chandra next turn. We'll see. Yeah, I think I'm gonna get greedy. Don't have to ultimate Chandra quite yet. Keep her in play for a turn. She's not under any pressure. That's a good one. Although right now it only deals one. So do we proactively loot? I guess so. Ditch islands. Yeah, the Electromancer is a little awkward here. It's not gonna zap anything. We could have, I guess, considered discarding a Soren's Thirst with the loot from Visionary and then play Electromancer with two in the graveyard to zap the channeler. But we could just run out the Electromancer by itself. I guess untapping and looting again is fine. And then just discard Thirst, play Electromancer with two in the graveyard. Alright, let's discard Thirst. It's a little weird, but I think it's fine. And then I'll play the Beacon. And then play Electromancer. I guess we'll be tapped out of Cruelty, but that's fine. Also get to draw a card. And point's gonna use a time twist. And now the cruelty can kill anything. Skulker, good win condition. 
I should consider attacking, but yeah, let's wait one more turn. And then next turn we can ultimate Chandra. And have a lot of mana to work with. Oh yeah, Kyura did a ton of work this game. Uh, drew us three extra cards, untapped vessel, generating quite a bit of extra mana. And she's still in play. Yeah, we're playing it maybe a bit too conservative by not attacking. But I feel like if we can ultimate Chandra, then it's pretty much game over anyway. So I want to try our best to make sure we can protect our Planeswalker. And there's a bounce spell on the Giants. Proliferates onto the Flux Chandler. They could have bounced Chandra if they wanted to. Maybe their game plan is trying to deck us. Or they can activate Weird, get back Dismissal and bounce Chandra. Yeah, I think they are hoping to just deck us. But I think we can win before that happens. Seven to our, our opponent's face. Nicol Bolas, that's a good one. Alright, so let's get comfortable. Play the lands. Make some mana. Untamp with Cura, make some more mana. We can Spark Harvest the Flux Channeler sacking our 2 2. Let's start with Spark Harvests, sacking a creature, killing this. Could also sack our Chandra, to be honest. But if we sack this, we get to make an extra token with the Even Eternal, so that's a bit of value. They could sack the Weird to get back Teferi's Time Twists. To then bounce the Channeler an additional time, but that's fine by me. Parahelix Electromancer, sure. And then I think we just want to run out our Planeswalkers here, Nicol Bolas. Gain a life. Play Jaya. And then we'll still be able to play Augur or Lazada Breaver. just kill all their creatures. You're not exactly a quick learner, are you? Can use any of these abilities. I guess we could also untap our vessel with uh, Nicol Bolas and then we could have cast our Aven Eternal instead of the Lazotep Reaver. Maybe that would have been better actually. Yeah, let's just minus. I do to suffer for your call. And I'm gonna start attacking. Alright, minus from Jaya would have been enough, since there's Jaya's static ability and Nicol Bolas is red. So if we had minus 2 instead of minus 3 then we would have been able to uh, kill the 3 toughness dirt ogre as well. So that's a, an interesting interaction that I didn't notice. But yeah, I mean, at that point we can click buttons at random and still win the game. Alright, well... Two pretty sweet games so far. Let's hope those continue. On the play, with a reasonable hand. Don't have blue for visionary, but Guild Globe can help. Dreadmalkin. Well, there's our Dragon God. I guess we sank the globe just to cast our Jace's Triumph. Try and hit our land drops that way. Seems fine.
Mana Geode also works. Pretty good fixer here. And Aid the Fallen can get Nicol Bolas back. Do we want to keep an island? Don't know if that's necessary anymore. I think we can bottom that. Oh, never mind. Beacon can make both red and blue. Yeah, it doesn't come up a whole lot that you need both colors, but it does indeed make two different colors. So we would have been able to cast Nicol Bolas regardless. Yeah, sometimes I think this just makes one mana for Planeswalkers, but it makes two different ones. Just doesn't come up that often. Alright, well, I mean, casting Nicol Bolas is pretty good. And then just plus. And then next turn we can maybe play an Augur, sack it to a Spark Harvest. And then Electromancer has more food in the graveyard too. And if our opponent goes all in on Dreadmulk in to kill Nicol Bolas, we've got an easy target for Spark Harvest. Cruelty or Visionary, using a premium removal spell just to try and reduce the loyalty on our Dragon God. Feeble effort indeed. So let's plus. Toll the Invasion looking good alongside Spark Harvest as well. So... Oh boy, we can even Electromancer killing Dreadmalkin. How much more can our opponent take? I think we want to check out their hand first. I think that makes more sense. Alright, so it's a pretty stacked hand. Bleeding Edge is looking good. Evolution Sage could proliferate if they put counters on Dreadmalkin. Crocodile being a hexproof threat is going to be difficult to deal with. Unless we can counter it with a no escape. So kind of an interesting spot. I think it's between Edge and Crocodile. Taking the Croc might be the safest play. Although Bleeding Edge again kind of lines up poorly against our Electromancer. I think we take the Edge. We could Spark Harvest the Reaper right now, and then play an Augur. Seems fine. Let's Augur first. That's a miss. Should have maybe considered keeping up No Escape instead of playing the Augur. But then... Or Nicol Bolas would have been under more pressure, so I kind of wanted to clear one of the attackers. But yeah, that's game over. Opponent's just too far behind. Well, Nicol Bolas claims a third victim here. Let's keep it up. Alright, turn to Guild Globe. Turn 3, Jace's Triumph once again. We'll need to draw some red mana for Electromancer, but I believe... Aid the Fallen, get back our Chandra at some point. Tibalt Serrator. So the sad news here is that we might not be able to cast our spells. Hopefully Jace's Triumph delivers. Alright, Beacon solves some of our issues, can help us cast Jaya and half of Chandra. Doesn't quite help us with the Electromancer yet. Alright. Opponent returns a favor, Mana Geode. Well, it's almost like we built a functional deck. So, Mana Geode into Augur looks good. And I think I'll keep the Islands. Kinda just wanna hit my land drops for now. Yeah, I mean, our hand is pretty mana-hungry with Aid the Fallen, all these 5 mana plays as well. I guess I should have bottomed that since we were gonna play Augur. Yeah, that didn't make a ton of sense now, did it? Forgot we were playing Augur afterwards, so... Should have definitely bottomed if we wanted to increase our chances of hitting with Augur. On the bright side, we decreased our chances of hitting a Nicol Bolas. Perfect. 
by keeping the land on top we make it less likely that we reveal a planeswalker that we can't draw with the auger. So all according to plan. And I think I'm blocking if they want to spend their turn pumping the Rager. It's probably fine, although we do want to keep it for Spark Harvest. And maybe we take it. We've got the Thirst to kill the Rager at instant speed as well. Drew an island anyway. Just like we drew it up. Alright, so we can even cast a Chandra if we wanted to. Other opponent does have 4 mana up, no escape is an issue. Opponent did not pump with the Rager, so they do have something they want to do at instant speed. Also have to keep in mind that uh, no escape exiles or planeswalkers, so we can't get it back with Aether Fallen. I think we can also just afford to say go and then block with Augur and then Sorn's Thirst, although I guess they know about the Sorn's Thirst now. But we're not in a hurry. Kind of just want my opponent to tap out. So I'll block. Opponent pumps. I'll Thirst. And I'm fine with whichever outcome happens here. Alright, Rager dies. Opponent still has 3 mana up and they're gonna pass, but they can't no escape a vessel. And then next turn we can start double spelling. Ooh, Krenko. That one we wanna try and kill. I guess we could play Chandra, get this countered, and then we could choose how to kill Krenko. Electromancer would be enough, but again, no escape. I think we lead with Chandra. We don't really have a choice, we have to play into the no escape at some point. So I think I'm gonna play Chandra, and then this is likely gonna bait out the counterspell. And then we still get to kill Krenko here. I don't want to bait with the Cyclops, since I think Cyclops is actually better than Chandra here. And between Spark Harvest and Cruelty, which removal spell do we want to use? I think I'm using Spark Harvest. Cruelty is a bit more flexible. Spark Harvest does kill Planeswalkers. So there is definitely some advantage to keeping the Spark Harvest. We were one mana short of playing a 5-drop afterwards, sadly. So let's kill the Manticore. And then we get to untap and Electromancer the zombie here. Or we could Jaya Minus, since Electromancer can kill even bigger stuff. Although putting a creature in play is kind of tempting, just to start applying pressure. Although if we Jaya first, then Electromancer deals even more damage. So, they're all good options here. I think I'll Jaya first. I can turn anything to ask. Back to basics. And then, I think I'm fine playing out the lands. Do have a looter in our deck. But we're pretty mana hungry. Alright, so this lines up pretty well. Now Electromancer can kill the Manticore, thanks to Jaya dealing one more damage. And Jaya can minus once again. So we dealt with two Manticores. Not bad. Do we keep land in hand now? I guess we do. We have enough mana to aid the Fallen and cast an Electromancer here anyway. Is our deck all six drops? Almost. Their own Electromancer. But we can aid the Fallen it back. We kind of want Jaya to die first. So we're gonna let Jaya die here, I think, before we aid the Fallen anything back. And they're just gonna keep Jaya in play. It makes sense since we're playing black, so they don't want to enable aid the Fallen. But maybe at some point we can proliferate and get another activation out of her. Let's check out what they're working with. Alright, they do have a Teferi's Time Twist, which is quite strong here, and a Roll Reversal. So we gotta watch out not to play anything too good into the board. Catharsis can burn us out. I think Time Twist is the scariest card right now. 
since it can bounce the Electromancer and kill one of our creatures. Roll Reversal can't steal a Planeswalker if they don't control Planeswalker, and our creatures are kind of equivalent at the moment. I think I take the Time Twist. And we could aid the Fallen just for the Cyclops, to kill their Cyclops. I think we wait one more turn. Don't want to take too much damage, otherwise this can burn us out. Alright, Cruelty can kill Electromancer, so we're not in a hurry. Think we'll upkeep it. So if they do have a time twist, then uh, they don't get to attack us. We don't have a second Spark Harvest, sadly, otherwise sacrificing Jaya would have been pretty sweet. Invade the city, alright. Opponent applying the pressure here. QR the draw. Alright, I guess uh, we'll just have to be satisfied with getting an Electromancer, killing their zombie. So your opponent played pretty well by not killing Jaya here. I guess we can play Kiora and then play Cyclops, draw a card. It's probably better. Not a vessel, so nothing that we can untap that's useful here, just attack for one. Chandra got exiled by no escape from the opponents. Alright, not invade the city. Fair enough. Even Eternal. So Electromancer threatens to trade for the zombie army. I guess we can also untap Electromancer if they don't block. So it's probably worth it to get in for 5 here. Nature flows with vigor. If they steal the Avon Eternal, they get a Flyer, which could be awkward. So there's also some merit to just holding the Eternal. Because then we can have an extra Chum Blocker with the Zombie Army as well. I think we hold it. So we could just trade, or we can chump and race. I think we chump and try to race for now. Might be greedy. Our late game is pretty strong, we haven't drawn Bolas yet, we still have... What else? Some uh, six drops left in our deck. Opponent's got two unknowns and a reversal. Yeah, maybe it's greedy to try and race. Knowing what we still have left in our deck. So I'll uh, take the trade. Opponent doesn't have any creatures in play, but they might be sandbagging one for the reversal. I think I still play it. And hold some lands for our looter, got infinite mana anyway. Manticore. So they could reversal the army. They decide not to. So Eternal can get in there. No escape a turn late, sadly. Just keep Cure at 6. Yeah, we could uh, be dead here. If our opponent plays a creature, steals our army. They could hit us for quite a bunch. And that to another Catharsis. Well, our draws have not been too kind. Where's all our 6 drops at? I guess it doesn't hurt to untap. We're not gonna need all the loyalty on Cure anyway. Uh, let's jump and trade. Alright, that's a good draw. Hope they don't have another no escape. They do. Yeah, no escape is pretty good against our deck, full of expensive planeswalkers and six drop creatures. It's also the third Manticore opponent played, we dealt with the first two. So they've got a much more 
high curve version of the blue red deck than you usually see, which lines up pretty well against us with the no escapes and all the manticores. Against a more traditional blue red deck, we would have been pretty far ahead by now. I guess we could have countered our own giant in response just for the scry. I don't think that would have been quite worth it, but now we're just dead. So yeah, we flooded out a little bit here near the end. Oh well. It's also one of the downside of having so much mana ramp in our deck. Sometimes we'll draw all the lands and all the mana ramp and no action. So it was a close game regardless. Yeah, there were two islands at the bottom as well, so I think we had one land left in our deck. Alright, nice opening hands. Three of our colors. And we can play Visionary into Cruelty. And then we gotta hope to pick up a piece of mana fixing for Chandra. Ooh, hello Nicol Bolas. Lead with Swamp in case we need to Thirst onto. Facing another blue-red deck. And there's a Swamp, so... We've got all the mana fixing we need for Nicol Bolas. Just gotta hope they don't have a no-escape. And would we rather loot with Visionary or attack? Looting's probably better. Although in this stage of the game, all the cards in hand are pretty useful since we don't know yet if we're going to be flooding out or not. So attacking for one might be better. Yeah, let's attack for one. Since let's say we loot and draw into a land, so what do we discard? The land, maybe? But we also kind of want to draw lands. I think we're fine. Next turn we can cast Nicol Bolas. So just tap out for something random. If that works for me, although they're not fully tapped out. Alright, well, I'm not gonna play out Nicol Bolas now. Just gonna replay Visionary and I guess Reaver works too. I guess the presence of Beacon makes our opponent a little bit nervous here. So yeah, they definitely have a no escape in hand. That much is clear. Spark Harvest plays pretty well with our zombie army. So this is why we kind of need to create some weird form of pressure where we can force the opponent to tap out so they don't keep taking damage from our creatures and opponent taps out for Cyclops, activated our trap card. So I might even consider Spark Harvesting the Cyclops and just plussing with Nicol Bolas instead of killing the Cyclops, since otherwise Nicol Bolas could die to a bunch of burn spells. So yeah, Nicol Bolas is common. And he's not taking any prisoners. How fitting. It's plus. And then next turn we can even cast a Chandra. Sacrifice creature, kill this, sack this. And I'm okay keeping both on defense here. Protect our Planeswalker, maybe work up towards ultimates as a win condition. Could be fun. And next turn we get to go Mana Geode into Chandra. Alright, opponent makes a 5-5, five, five. fair enough. Would be a shame if something were to happen to it. So let's plus first. Let's check out their hand with Toll. Yeah, this seems fine. We could also play Mana Geode plus Cruelty, but I kind of want to check out what they're working with. Alright, so they did have the no escape, in fact, like we suspected. Dam Breaker's probably our biggest threat in this hand. They're gonna be forced to tap out. I don't think they can keep up no escape for much longer.
And that's gonna prompt a concession. Nickel Bolas is 4 for 4. Hasn't failed us yet. Alright, nice hand. What's up? We'll need a bit of mana fixing before we can cast our Dragon God here, but Eternal Cruelty, this is just a fine blue-black midrange hand. Hey, what do you know, another blue-red deck. It's almost as if the bots don't respect the archetype enough and Prophet ends up wheeling most of the time. Yeah, the blue-red deck is a little bit too easy to draft on Arena right now. I think all our 7-win decks have been blue-red, but uh, hopefully Nicol Bolas can give some justice. For now we could play even Eternal or we could Toll. Uh, if we play Eternal it's just gonna get zapped by a Jaius Greeting or something else. So I don't mind checking out her hand with Toll first. All right, there's a Jaius Greeting, their hand's pretty weak. Hellion we can deal with pretty easily. Could even decide to chum block and then have another chum blocker with Avon, or we can just make a 2 2. Opponent says go. So let's go ahead and play Avon Eternal. Attack for two. Make sure to play our swamp in case we draw a mountain so we can play Nicol Bolas. Could be a bluff attack. The problem here is if we block they get to kill the zombie and the eternal. Doesn't seem worth it. But in the opponent's spot I would attack even if I didn't have anything there. Alright, it's gonna be a skulker. Which is a good target for cruelty. Next turn we can play dam breaker, proliferate. So let's get that out of the way. Now blocking is a lot safer since they would need to cast two spells at instant speed to punish us. Opponent's gonna say go. And it's dam breaker time. Ah, another no escape. And a triumph. Alright, so they had the two instants for the prophets, which now lets them scry and improve their draw step. We have visionary to improve our draw step. Is Augur a 1 3? It is. And Hellion to sack it, so they get a bit of value still. Fair enough. Alright. Don't hate our spots, we're both top decking, but presumably we've got better top decks. Eight the Fallen. Well, if we ever need to get back a Nicol Bolas, we could even discard Nicol Bolas and then get it back with Aid the Fallen. So we can get a bit of value out of our Aid the Fallen while getting back Aven Eternal. We'll start by looting here, I think. Spark Harvest. Should have, I guess, considered tapping both our islands here in case we drew Mountain. I think I'm just gonna ditch the Swamp for now and then... Spark Harvests. Next turn on the Hellion, I think we can afford to take 4. And I don't want to sack our 2-2 if we don't have to. Kind of a tricky spot. Alright, do we block the Prophet now? They did get to Scry, but I don't think they Scryed their draw step. And I don't want to keep taking 1 damage for free. So I think I'll block. And if they kill Visionary... And our zombie, so be it, we get to kill Hellion, they're left with the Prophets, and we still have an Aid the Fallen in hand. Can probably win that game. Let's get in an attack. Could also loot first, and I guess discard Chandra, which we can Aid the Fallen back. If we draw land we can still hardcast Spark Harvest. If we don't, then we would have to sack the zombie. I guess I'm still okay looting here, since we do really want to find a way to cast our Nicol Bolas. 
All right, that will help. So Chandra can go. Could take another hit from the Hellion. Or we could Spark Harvest sacking the zombie to kill the Hellion right now. Again, probably should have tapped both islands there when looting in case we drew a mountain. I do want to play the Guild Globe this turn, so I think I'm okay using a Spark Harvest. Kill this, sack this. Put on 2 for 1 themselves to play the Hellion, we'll 2 for 1 ourselves to get rid of it, that's fine. Play Globe, and now we're all ready for Nicol Bolas. Still at 13 life. Don't hit our chances. We could even bait a counterspell with a Skulker or a Giant. How much of a coward are we? This isn't a coward stream. We'll remake the multiverse in my image. I will return. My intellect is without limit. All right. Augur Bolas. Another two mana, one three. Or does it find something this time? Looks like they find something. What's our play next turn? Heartfire. All right, Heartfire could do some damage. But we still have our eighth of Fallen. To get back a Fallen, Nicol Bolas. I'll block. Opponent only single mountain, so they can't finish off Nicol Bolas here. Alright. Can play a giant. We could cruelty the prophets to ensure Nicol Bolas survives. Because if we play the giant, they could attack with both on Nicol Bolas and then sacrifice the one we block with giant to finish him off. But they would sack their entire board and we still have an 8th of Fallen. Can't really go wrong either way. And then we can block Prophets if they attack here. Opponent's going to use all their resources to get rid of our Planeswalker, just for us to get him back. There's a non-zero chance your opponent concedes when we put Aid the Fallen on the stack. So we should probably do that as soon as possible. Creature and Planeswalker. Alright, no concession yet, so we'll keep playing. Um, mana Geode necessary to play Nicol Bolas next turn, so we'll play that. I guess we didn't show them the mana fixing yet. There we go. I should have played the mana geo at first so they knew we could cast Nicol Bolas. We didn't have red mana, so that's why they didn't concede on the spot. All right, well, Nicol Bolas is five for five. Every time he shows up, we win the game. So let's keep drawing Nicol Bolas, I guess. And looks pretty excellent. What's up, Nicol Bolas? Guild Globe to cast him. I'm wondering if the algorithm likes to put Nicol Bolas in our opening hand just so we get to experience him. To bait people into keep playing the game. Because imagine if you're playing your first draft and you open Nicol Bolas, you put him in your deck and you never draw him. That would be disappointing. Alright, Augur Bolas, speaking of disappointing. Let's get in there. They might have a Divine Arrow up here. I think I just want to draw two. Make sure we keep hitting our land drops. Firemind's Vessel. It's going to help us play Nicol Bolas in two turns. Seems fine. Sadly, Nicol Bolas destroys and doesn't exile, so they will still get there and mass 2. 
Cruelty, on the other hand, does exile. So if we play Nicol Bolas, we're just plussing. Or we could play Aven Eternal and Cruelty and then next turn play Nicol Bolas while having him a bit better protected. I think I'm just playing the Aven. And then we can play Bolas next turn. It's not like the opponent's playing blue and we have to worry about counter spells. The one thing that could wreck us is a Toll of the Invasion, but if they had one, they would have played it last turn. And if they draw it for the turn, they may or may not play it. And then we can take three from the Herald and then maybe kill it end of turn with the Cruelty. Silverwing is a little annoying. I don't mind countering that one. Toll of the Invasion can stay on top. Seems like a good follow-up. We can just jump the Herald with our 1-1 now and make another 1-1 to keep jumping while we play Nicol Bolas and plus a bunch and hope to dodge a Spark Harvest. Yeah, I think we should play Nicol Bolas and plus before we play Guild Globe in case we draw into a 2-drop creature we would want to play instead. And if we happen to draw into a land, we could have played Toll as well, which would have been even better than playing a 2-drop. I guess it's somewhat reasonable to want a Toll first to check for a Spark Harvest. But we also have to watch out for opponent top decking a Toll and just taking Nicol Balls from our hand. Get a Giant, so that's a pretty good hit. Let's uh, play Globe. Dambreaker is looking good. Let's attack with the Eternal. Yeah, Massacre Girl could definitely massacre this board, but I don't think we care too much. Get to untap, so that's plus first. Our own Spark Harvest. Oh man, we might even win with the Nicol Bolas ultimate here, since we even get to proliferate. Ooh, Ugin. Almost, our opponent almost managed to set up Ugin killing Nicol Bolas, which would have been pretty epic. And they do have Aid the Fallen to get back Ugin as well. But I'm still gonna take the Ugin here so they can't play him next turn. And then... Are we fast enough to ultimate Nicol Bolas? Next turn we get to play Dambreaker plus... I guess if her opponent draws a land they could still play Ugin in time. So let's attack. I think this one... Can probably attack as well. So we'll let this trade happen. We might see removal on Eternal. I guess we could even consider using the Cruelty on the Herald so they don't get value from the aid. Using Cruelty on the Herald is a bit of a waste, but when we have Thirst and Harvest still in hand, it might be worth it. So we could have considered doing that before attacking, but maybe then the opponent would have felt a need to cast a Divine Arrow. So they do have 6 mana, so they will be able to get back Ugin next turn. And they're gonna go for it. I guess never mind. We can just plus Nicol Bolas, her opponent has to sack a land and they would have to top deck another land in order to cast Ugin. And then uh, Dambreaker would have given us ultimate on the following turn to win the game. But there was still a chance they would have top decked the land and been able to cast Ugin minus, but then Ugin dies on the spot by a, our attack. So they would have been super far behind no matter what, even if they did manage to prevent the ultimate. But it would have been pretty sweet to pull off the ultimate with Nicol Bolas to win the game. Either way, 6-1, and one, all the victories thanks to Nicol Bolas, so let's see if we can win the last one here. Hand looks pretty strong. We've got the Visionary to help us loot, which is important in a hand with this many mana accelerators, so we make sure we don't flood. And then Cruelty as removal. Electromancer's looking good. Paradise Druid. All right, double Fire Mind, one of those is probably getting discarded. Thunder Drake, good target for Cruelty. We could Cruelty the Drake right now. Opponents playing blue-green, they're gonna have some big creatures, so Cruelty is gonna have some good targets. So we could just take a turn off casting Mana Geode first. I think I'm okay playing the Geode. 
Scry, Jaya's looking quite strong. Can cast her next turn, potentially. Maybe snipe a Paradise Druid that's tapped. Although we might want to Cruelty the Drake first so they can't finish off Jaya. Our deck's not great at pressuring Planeswalkers, so we'll see what happens here. Thunder Drake gets in the red zone. Alright, so we've got a few decisions to make. This turn we can play a Vessel to help us ramp, we can play a Jaya, shoot down the Druid, or we can Cruelty the Drake. Visionary doesn't get to attack, so we could also Cruelty plus loot with Visionary, which is pretty tempting and get rid of the drake. We could wait until our opponent untaps, maybe puts an additional counter on the thunder drake. Uh, we could get punished by a number of spells, bump spells, salazotep platings if we wait, but making them potentially waste an extra counter from the planeswalker could be worth it. So I think I'm okay just passing. I will end up using the cruelty on the drake before damage, but maybe we get a bit more value by waiting. It is greedy to wait, but I think we're a little bit behind, so we need a bit of extra fortune to go our way. All right, they're gonna put the counter on the spinner, which makes sense, they don't want to put all their eggs in one basket. And they're gonna dismissal the visionary, so... Well, let's hope uh, this doesn't go poorly. They can still tamp the drake for mana now, thanks to the planeswalker as well. It's also one of the downsides of waiting. And now we get to loot. Augur's probably fine, discard one of the vessels. And they might proliferate here, which would be quite strong. Yeah, Druid proliferate. So we're pretty far behind. Taking seven. And this Electromancer only has one instant or sorcery in the graveyard. Jaya can no longer kill the Paradise Druids. Jaya could kill the Planeswalker before it gets another activation. But then we're pretty much dead on board. So yeah, turn to Paradise Druid kind of enabled this entire start from our opponent. Which just goes to show how good that card is. Let's play an Aven. So it's not looking good for us here. Also don't have triple black, so we can't even cast Nickel Bolas if we draw him. Not that Nickel Bolas would necessarily save us. So yeah, we needed one more cheap interactive spell to go alongside the Electromancer to keep us alive in this game. Druid becomes a 2-2. Everyone attacks. So I think we're priced into trading for the Druid, and then we can block a 2-2. Take 5. Seems okay. And then next turn we can maybe use Jaya to clean up a 2-2. Not a Snare Spinner. Alright, there's Nicol Bolas. Sadly can't cast him. So if we play Jaya, kill the Zombie or the Palmbride Druids, then we're still taking Lethal since they can pump Snare Spinner and attack with everyone and they would have 5 damage. So that doesn't quite work. So if we play Electromancer, does it deal damage to Planeswalkers? Only creatures. I guess Jaya kill a token and then Chum block the big snare spinner keeps us alive. It would have kept us alive if we didn't time out. So yeah, the play was probably just play Jaya anyway, kill the token. And then we can Chum the biggest snare spinner. And then take four down to one. And they might even send something at Jaya. And we could maybe survive an extra turn. Well... At least we didn't mess up too badly since we would have died anyway to Rosk, so... Didn't get punished for timing out. Good to know. Alright, GG's. Alright, so... We'll have to try again here. Let's see if we can win the last one. This is a true finals. Alright, there's Nicol Bolas, there's our mana fixing, 
There's our cruelty. Let's keep and hope to get there. Turn on forest. We'll play a swamp in case of thirst. Black green, so we have to worry about discard mostly. Triumph is a good one. Can also play Cure on next turn, which can also help us ramp into a turn for Nickel Bolas. Opportunist, that's fine. Opponent goes after the Planeswalker. I've got that sinking feeling again. And our opponent says go with 4 mana up. So this is again the spot where don't really want to play into a no escape. So we might just be better off playing some small creatures here. I guess we can also play the Vessel and tap it with Cure and then still play the Reaver. Maybe that's the play. I guess I don't mind that. And then they probably will use a no escape to counter the reaver since they don't want us to be able to protect Kyura. And then next turn we get to resolve Nicol Bolas. Kyura will die, but that's fine. So the vessel plus Kyura interaction coming up once again. Just gonna slip away. Wolf. So the issue now is that our Nicol Bolas won't be very well protected if we play him. If we play him on plus, he's gonna die. If we play him on minus, he's gonna die. So we probably still want to take a turn off to try and set up and make sure our Nicol Bolas sticks around. So we can do that in a number of ways. We can Triumph and Cruelty and then next turn's Electromancer can clean up something as well. So I think we start by casting the Triumph. And then... I think we can say go, kill the wolf in the opponent's turn. Maybe keep up no escape, take the damage, and then end of turn kill the wolf. That might be safer. Alright. And kind of like just playing the Electromancer before Nicol Bolas. Again, we're not in a hurry. We can take our time. Just want to make sure we can protect the Dragon God once we play him. And this turn we can play Electromancer, shooting down the Opportunist. Or we could play it even safer, play Visionary, keep up no escape. And then wait until we can play Electromancer and have no escape backup. Points at 6 mana, so they need the 7th before they can use the Opportunist. I guess playing it extra slow is fine. Play Visionary for now. Could also play Second Vessel, but then we can't keep up No Escape. We'll take our time. Just want to make sure that uh, Nicol Bolas sticks the landing. And I don't feel like we're under a ton of pressure right now. Cruelty or Visionary, that's perfectly acceptable. Hope they play into No Escape so we get to tap out next turn. Opponent says go once again. Alright, so they're not playing into our counter. Is it time to run out uh, Electromancer and be shields down on no escape? Or do we just play the vessel, keep up no escape, and then next turn we can do everything? But in the meantime, we're also taking three extra damage. I guess that's still the, the safest play here. Opponent could also top deck to all of the invasion at any point and make us discard Nicol Bolas. Vessel comes into play tapped, so we can go vessel plus Electromancer, otherwise that would have been sweet. Alright, we'll keep playing it safe. We've been playing it safe so far. I guess we'll do it for one more turn. And then next turn we get to finally double spell effectively. So what's it gonna be? Finale of Devastation. That one, sadly, we can't counter with no escape. So that's pretty brutal. Gets the center nurture. We do have enough mana to play Nicol Bolas and Chandra, but don't have enough mana to play two 5-drops. So I guess the play for now is just Electromancer, kill Opportunist, keep up no escape, and we're fine trading for Nurture. And 
and then next turn we can finally maybe deploy Nicol Bolas. Alright, I'm gonna bite. Reaper's annoying enough that I wanna counter it here. Thirst um, doesn't do much at the moment. The life gain could be relevant if we feel like we're too far behind, but even if our opponent plays another creature here or kills the Electromancer, I don't think we're that desperate for two life. And Black Green's gonna have big creatures we have to deal with, so two damage is probably not gonna be enough. Aid the Fallen. Alright, now we feel a lot more comfortable sending some uh, Planeswalkers onto the battlefield. We could play Chandra to bait and then still play Nicol Bolas. Because if they had another no escape, they would counter this, right? Alright. Plus, find a land, play the land, play Nicol Bolas. And that's game! Nicol Bolas does it again. What a draft. We played it extra safe just to make sure Nicol Bolas would resolve, and as soon as he resolved it was game over. So I guess it paid off in the end. Sweet, so seven wins in the end. Pretty much won every game where we resolved the Nicol Bolas. So mission accomplished, first pick worked out pretty well, and had a pretty fun uh, draft here. Let's crack some packs. Narset's Reversal, not a great card in limited. Pack one, pick one, Pledge of Unity and Mowu are a lot more appealing cards. Both quite strong, of course this commits us to two colors, but Mowu also kind of wants to be in a green-white or plus one counter heavy deck, so it kind of commits us to an archetype. So even though Pledge might be a multicolor card, both cards are almost the same in terms of uh, committing to a color or an archetype. So you can kind of pick whichever one you prefer. And the next pack we've got Living Twister. Pretty strong card, not the easiest to cast, double red and green. But the effect is quite powerful, especially in the late game. If you're flooding out, you can just pick up your lands, toss them at your opponent, kill all their creatures. So pretty sweet card. Pack one, pick one, would we take it over Spark Harvest is a question. I think it's close. The uncommons are also quite good, band together is great too, so pretty stacked pack. I think I like Harvest slightly better than Taskmaster and Rager still, I think I like Taskmaster over Rager slightly. But again, all these cards are good, can't really go wrong with either one of them. Alright, so that's gonna do it for this draft, but for now, I wanna thank everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.